Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Aristotle Constantine, I'm the Commissioner of the Republic of Cyprus. And uh, the first, and, first and foremost, we should uh, thank and congratulate the MDR for this wonderful event. And uh, a round of applause for the Now, I realize that um, it is likely that uh, you expect me to focus on Cyprus itself and, and our take on the Mediterranean diet. And uh, whilst it's obviously important that uh, we take every opportunity to promote our, our products, like our unique and wonderful Kalumi cheese and many others, uh, I think it's equally important that we take the opportunity to examine the Mediterranean diet and the region of the Mediterranean in uh, something of a broader or, or rather a deeper context, if you like. Now, as you all know, I'm sure, the culinary traditions may vary, but the fundamentals of the Mediterranean diet are universal throughout our region. The shared philosophy of balanced nutrition, healthy eating, uh, of simplicity and seasonality, and it is a testament to common cultural heritage and identity of the countries of the Mediterranean, and it reflects the values of hospitality, neighborliness, and inclusiveness that we all share. We also share many of the same challenges. In 2013, UNESCO added the Mediterranean diet to its list of cultural heritage of humanity. And when it did, it highlighted not just the health benefits of this dieta, this way of life of ours, but also its beneficial impact on environmental conservation, on biodiversity of land and seas, on intercultural dialogue, and respect for cultural diversity. Essentially, the Mediterranean diet is considered to have four sustainable benefits. Major health, uh, major health and nutrition, as we frequently uh, relate to it, low environmental impact and richness in biodiversity, high social, socio-cultural values, and positive local economic returns. And on, it is on these latter points that I'd like to spend a little bit of time. Because unfortunately, the agricultural systems upon which the Mediterranean diet is based are facing many challenges and threats from factors such as climate change, but as well as industrialization and commercialization and westernization of the food industry, and ultimately, low economic viability, which results in small, traditional, artisanal enterprises, which are the backbone of the Mediterranean diet, being in a position uh, of, of strife and struggle. You may be surprised to find out that, with the exception of France, all Mediterranean countries rely on foreign imports to satisfy domestic demand. Cyprus currently imports three times more agricultural products than it exports. Small producers and farmers were hit hardest by the financial crisis in the region, and they are still struggling to fully recover. A recent OECD report found that just one in every 10 small, medium-sized enterprises in Greece exports. That is a rate among the EU's lowest, but not far off, I would wager, from many other Mediterranean countries. We need to bring our small farmers and producers into the global value chain. And to illustrate the makeup, I pulled this, um, this table from Eurostat that examines the farm structures. You can see that, again, with the exception of France, and I put Germany there just for comparison's sake, the percentages of small farms, micro farms, under five hectares, in, in, in the case of Greece and Cyprus, make up more than 75% of, of all the farms. These ancestral agricultural systems, these artisanal producers and manufacturers, constitute the foundation of the Mediterranean diet and are crucial components of our cultural, ecological, agricultural diversity and identity. They can and should sustainably provide multiple goods and services for export, as well as food and livelihood security for thousands of small scale farmers across the region. It is these types of micro enterprises that are producing phenomenal products 
like the uh, olive oil, many of you may have seen that Jill Myers is importing into the US, which has one of the highest phenolic, phenolic um, consistency of, of any olive oil on the market. A large industrial producer can't, can't do that. It is the micro enterprise that does that. So yes, increasing our exports is important for our economies and for each individual manufacturer, producer, and farmer we represent. But what I've also come to realize that whilst each of us, and when I say each of us, each of the Mediterranean countries, needs to promote our respective industries and products independently, it is equally true that we have no need to compete with each other. We are of the Mediterranean. And we are all, both collectively and individually, integral parts of the Mediterranean diet. And when we collaborate, as we're doing today, the benefits to us surpasses any possible independent efforts we might make. Earlier this month, the Euromed 7, or the Med Group, which is basically a, an alliance of the Southern, Mediterranean, uh, Southern European Union member states, essentially Cyprus, France, Greece, Italy, Malta, Portugal, and Spain, met in Malta for the sixth summit following the previous summit in Cyprus and echoed similar sentiments. And I think it's worthwhile perhaps me quoting just a few excerpts from their joint declaration. It is a strategic priority to promote a renewed and operational partnership with the southern neighborhood, building on convergent interests in the region, promoting dialogue and converting challenges into opportunities, contributing to a positive pan-Mediterranean agenda based on human and sustainable development. A peaceful, stable and prosperous Mediterranean region is a fundamental element for the future of Europe and is in the interest of the EU as a whole, and I would argue more than just the EU. We hold the vision of a southern Mediterranean region that fulfills its untapped potential to become a hotbed for creation, growth, and development. We believe that our diversity and our geographical proximity lend themselves to make the southern Mediterranean the leading European region. And this relationship encompasses more than just the Euromed. The trilateral relationships that some of you may be aware of between Cyprus, Greece, and Israel, Cyprus, Greece, and Egypt, and Lebanon span almost every conceivable field. What we are seeing is an unprecedented degree of secular and modernist cooperation and collaboration within our region. 